Hey everybody, welcome to the Sacramento Speaker and Entrepreneur Network webinar for June 2018 and I am Katrina Sawa, the organizer and also a speaker, author and Jumpstart Your Biz Coach with jumpstartyourmarketing.com. Uh, if you haven't been to one of our webinars yet or if you're seeing this elsewhere, <clears throat> we do have a, a meetup page where you could go to. It's forward slash Sacramento Speakers Network. But you can also find that online at sacspeaker.com. So sacspeaker.com will get you to my website, which will show you how to apply to be a speaker at one of our events. But it will also uh, give you a link to the meetup where you can find our webinars, which are free to anybody around the world. Anybody can come, even though it's called the Sacramento Speaker and Entrepreneur Network. We welcome speakers from anywhere to our webinars, and this is a way for us all to network with you, as well as you to network with the 2,600 or whatever members that we have in this group. Uh, then we do a live networking event once a month as well, here in Sacramento area. It's in Roseville currently, uh, on, and it happens tomorrow. It's usually the first Wednesday in July. Keep in mind, for those of you who go to the live events, in July, it will not be on July 4th. We will not be having a luncheon on July 4th. Instead, it's going to be on Thursday, July 5th. So the webinar will still be on the 3rd, and the luncheon will be on the 5th, so Tuesday and Thursday. So um, you're going to enjoy your holiday. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, meetup and everything we do is all designed to help you grow your business as a speaker, an entrepreneur, figure out ways to make more money, get more clients, get more speaking gigs, get started speaking, whatever it is you need to do. Speaking just happens to be one of the top marketing strategies that I usually teach in my coaching business to any kind of entrepreneur, doesn't matter what industry, what type of business you are. Typically, speaking is the fastest path to cash because you can get clients when you speak, whether it's in person or virtually like this, whether it's a video, a Facebook Live, a webinar, a Zoom call. Honestly, I mean, if people can connect with you deeper on a deeper level, they can get to know you like you trust you, you can get clients. So I love to teach people how to speak more uh, and get more speaking gigs all over the world, online and offline. So. That's why I run this group is because it's huge potential for people and we're really good at networking here. So if you haven't been to a webinar or one of our live events, uh, we are really good at networking and sharing resources. So one of the things um, that people do is like, okay, well, where do you need to find gigs? Well, how about this place or how about that place? Or I'm speaking here. Ooh, I bet you could be a speaker there too. So we're really good at networking, masterminding and sharing resources. So you definitely wanna show up because you never know who's gonna be in the room uh, whether it's online or offline, and who can provide that next great resource for you for speaking or your business in general. So, or be your next prospect or referral source, frankly. So we like to make sure that people that are on the webinar, open up your chat room, <clears throat> open up the chat box, which is down at the bottom of your screen, and it should pop up over on the right side of your screen if you're looking at all of us. Make sure too that I would recommend you have it in gallery view which means you need to, it should be saying speaker view up at the top right hand corner of your black screen. It should say speaker view, but that means you're in gallery view. If you click it, it'll click to gallery for speaker view, which means you're seeing a whole bunch of pictures on top and one big person on the bottom. And it's, I think it's better if you could see us like the Brady Bunch and we can see each other and what we're doing personally, but that's up to you. <laughs> I know, the Brady Bunch. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, um, so this call is really, it's a condensed version of our in-person events, but so we have an agenda. You should have gotten an email with the agenda. Um, Carrie, we can't see you very well. If you have a light in front of you, that would be helpful. Uh, if not, it's okay. Um, it would just be so we can see you a little bit better. It totally uh, blinds me, but I'm going to try to work on a solution. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I bought one of these clamp lights and I love it. And I'll show you actually so you guys know because it's really cool. So I bought one of these little clamp lights and it literally clamps on the top of my desktop and then shines bright in my face. So uh, it's I that sounds it. terrible. <laughs> Best invention ever. Um, anywho. So first we start out with introductions and then we'll move into Brighton is going to speak today about YouTube and what to do with YouTube as a speaker. And then I'm going to do a little quick business video tip 
and then uh, we're gonna have a five minutes in the spotlight. So if you've been on with us before, you know that the five minutes in the spotlight, be prepared with some kind of challenge you might be having. And I'll just kind of do this and pick somebody uh, since we don't have a name to draw. Um, or we'll take whoever has a hot um, need at the time. And um, during the call, make sure you're putting into the chat room your a brief description of what you do. Uh, your website URL, the full URL, and any kind of free gift that you might have or a free landing page or a free audio or whatever. Anything people can go and check you out for is what you want to put over in the chat room. While everybody's doing introductions, obviously pay attention to people's introductions because you might be able to collaborate with them. You can message with them privately over in the chat room. You can also take it offline, which means you want to... Um, Make sure you put your website, maybe your email address into the chat. So, all right. Hopefully we don't have any, oh good. Hopefully we don't have any um, <laughs> buy box or whatever coming through because <laughs> I just saw the UCAM. Hopefully that's a real person. Darla, is that a real person? Are you a real person? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I did this webinar like a week ago and I had advertised the actual link out to Facebook just to say anybody can come and boy did we get a bunch of spammers and they like took they hijacked my webinar it was insane I couldn't figure out how to stop them it was really weird anyways so let's do introductions whoever's here by the time we're done is all the people that get introductions um, Brighton will go last because we're gonna introduce you last um, so Mickey would you go first and just share in, in a minute or so what you do and and all that good stuff. Sure, happy to. I'm Mickey Griffith. I'm with a company called Ascentive, and I am a referral marketing coach. I also do general business coaching, uh, but my background is primarily in marketing and specifically referral marketing. And I'm actually going to be speaking tomorrow with the in person thing. Yes. So, hey. And I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so I put my link here and I'm really looking forward to packing everything into it tomorrow. So the only other thing I would suggest is if you uh, have thought about a class with me, click on my link, go to events. There's a class that I'm doing at the end of June that I'll also be talking about a little bit tomorrow. Awesome. Okay. All right. Rhonda, how about you? Where are you going next? Hey, Katrina. Nice to see everybody. Hi, my name is Rhonda Liebig, and I started a new business this year. It's backwards. But it's fresh inspiration, professional talks, and book signings. So if you have a book and you've been out speaking, I would love to talk to you. I put together a 2018 tour. I am bringing three speakers with me to Las Vegas at the beginning of July. I have one more slot open. We have a lot of fun stuff if you come to Vegas with us. That's it. And I'll put the link in the chat box. Awesome. So she's looking for speakers, you guys. Awesome. So... And I'm going to mute you because I think there's some noise in your background. So, uh, Laura, how about you? Hi. Hi. I'm Laura Long. Nice to see everybody. I'm a life coach and a energetics worker. I can explain that to you if you want more information about that. But basically, I work with people who have a little bit of success, kind of feel you know like they've accomplished a few things, but they still feel like there's something missing. And together we bridge that gap. So that's what I do for people. Awesome. Thank you. Make sure you're putting something in the chat. And then uh, Carrie, go ahead. Hi. Hi. So my name is Carrie Perky Pyle, and I am a professional freelance writer with experience, 15 years of experience in the nonprofit marketing arena. And I am just now this year launching my freelance business because I've been working with with nonprofits as an employee before and so I'm out in the I specialize in raising money for nonprofits through direct mail and other writing and I am in the middle to final like the closer to the end than the than the beginning stages of building my new website and so I'm gonna put the the editing link into the chat box in a few minutes so that you guys can I would love it if you went in and poked around and said, hey, I think this is working. I think this could be improved as I'm launching my new website. So thank you. Awesome. We will. I love to look at people's websites and give you feedback. <laughs> you may not want to hear the feedback all the time, but I'm happy to talk to you about it. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Daria, are you there? Daria? 
uh, I don't know. I'm not technically advanced here. That's okay. We can hear you. Oh my God. Okay. We can hear you. We just can't see you. So you're welcome. There's people that call into this all the time. So you can totally go no video. It's fine. Or you can figure out your video if you can. And otherwise just introduce yourself and I'm, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, um, I wasn't prepared for this, but I'll do the best I can. I am uh, I am writing a story of my life. I've got the draft one done. I'm about to turn it into the publisher. I also run a meetup group, and my business is My Empowered Self, where we do um, I do Reiki and also past life regression and regression therapy and hypnotherapy. Okay, great. Well, you'll put the. Do you know how to get to the chat room? Are you on the computer? I'm on a computer. Are you on an iPad or? I'm on, I'm on a regular uh, laptop. Computer. Laptop. Okay, so if you're looking at the video screen where you see all of our pictures. Yeah. Okay, then look on the bottom of that, like run your cursor over the bottom. It should say invite, manage participants, share screen and chat. Okay. If you open up the chat, then you can put your stuff in the chat room over there. Oh, oh, you mean like my website and stuff? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so because what I do is I copy the chat room when we're done, and I put that on a web page. I sent you an email uh, which page it is just right before this call, and then your information lies in that chat room on that webinar page, the replay page. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. And put your meetup page if you want. You can invite people to your meetup. Uh, okay. If you uh, have questions along the way, you can type into the chat room and I'll see them in case we can't, because we can't see you visibly, just raise your hand or whatnot, whatnot, so you can type into the chat room, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, perfect. All right, uh, any last words? Anybody have anything before we introduce Brighton? Okay, so, and I'll, um, so Brighton, I'll read your bio, but then feel free to share more and expand on that with what you do, like these guys did, and then just go right into your talk, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and then, oh, the one, I forgot to share about what I do, and I'll do that. So I know you guys know a little bit about what I do. Um, I happen to have a couple things coming up in case you're interested. Um, I am doing a book compilation right now. So um, it's called Jumpstart Your Blank. And that means you would fill in the blank with your expertise. So like Mickey would be Jumpstart Your Referrals. And Rhonda might be Jumpstart Your Speaking. And uh, Carrie might be Jumpstart Your, you know, fill in the blank with whatever it is you're doing. And so if anybody wants to be published and be a published author before the end of the year, that is a great opportunity to do that because you only have to write one chapter and then you're in a book with a lot of different people. So, and it's, and there's things from jumpstart your social media to jumpstart your retirement income to weight loss, uh, to marketing business stuff. So it's all over the board. That's a great opportunity. And I can, I'll put the link to that page in the, um, in the chat room. And then I have a speaker training that starts next, next uh, Thursday. So if anybody last minute didn't know and wanted to come, it's uh, $197 still for the regular general admission ticket Friday and Saturday, two days in Rancho Cordova. Um, and you're going to get all your speaker stuff done. You also get uh, stuff so you know how to get gigs. And it's a lot, a lot of the logistics about speaking. So you're prepared for follow up and all kinds of things. And I'll put the link about the speaker training in there too. So, <clears throat> okay. So I want to introduce Brighton so you can jump off and tell us more about YouTube and what we need to know about YouTube. Let's see here. Where is your bio? Okay. Brighton West is a videopreneur. He began his video journey making narrative and documentary videos, but he was always behind the camera along the way. Uh, he learned that being on camera was more influential, beneficial, profitable than being behind it. So he overcame his on-camera jitters and now helps his clients turn the camera on themselves. Brighton has built his business by creating YouTube tutorials about using YouTube in business. Through his channel, he uh, helps these subject matter mm -hmm. experts avoid his early mistakes and accelerates their journey to success with YouTube. So, uh, Brighton, feel free to expand on that. I'm going to mute people as I hear noise and stuff, and um, but feel free to, we'll, we'll open it up for questions when he's done. 
Great. Thank you, Katrina. And great to be here. Um, and I'm just going to jump kind of right, right in. I, I, um, I work mostly with coaches, and sometimes I say coaches, authors, and speakers, and sometimes I say coaches who are authors and speakers, um, usually because once you've reached the stage where you're speaking and you're writing books, um, you're about ready for YouTube. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about YouTube and talk then dig in a little bit about why you'd want to use it as a speaker, why you wouldn't want to use it as a speaker, um, and give you a couple of examples of how you might use it as a speaker. And feel free to jump in with questions if you want to just turn your um, mute off and jump in. That's cool. Uh, it's pretty informal here. So um, starting out, just general YouTube. It's the second largest search engine in the world, uh, right behind Google. Uh, it is the place where people are going with how-to questions. And I have a feeling that you guys have a lot of how-to answers. Um, that's why I chose to work with coaches because they're, you know, any, anyone in a helper type of um, profession is going to be great on YouTube. It's a, it's a great platform for them. And coaches especially, you need that know, like, and trust factor. Um, and the only better way to build it is in person. Um, but, um, you know, YouTube is great because you don't have to do that traveling around in the travel circuit to go and be a speaker in all these different cities. Um, you can do it from your home studio or your desk and reach people around the world. Um, so the other thing is, it is the second most popular website in the world, too. So it's really, I mean, it's a really a very powerful place to be. And people are spending an awful lot of time there. Even though there's a lot of other social medias popping up, YouTube is holding steady at number two popular website. Um, so speaker, having speakers, why, why is it good for speakers? Um, and this is something that I, <clears throat> you know, I, um, I did it myself, I guess. I, I tried to become the authority on um, YouTube for small businesses, and then I kind of crunched it down into YouTube for, for coaches, authors, and speakers. But if you're a subject matter expert, you can make that, it's like a, it's a big amplifier for you to say, to claim that, to claim that you're a subject matter expert. And if you've already written a book, and if you've already, um, if you're already a speaker, you already see yourself as a subject matter expert. You're, you're up on the stage because you're sharing your knowledge, and YouTube is a great place to establish that. Um, there's, I mean, there are a lot of people uploading to YouTube, um, some of them better than others, but it's a great space. It's not that it's too full yet, um, so don't worry about that. There's a lot of space for people to come in and start sharing their expertise and being found as the expert, especially if your niche is, is kind of tight. Um, one, of the, one of my clients talked about how much confidence that she had built uh, for her public speaking by using YouTube. Um, I hadn't really thought about that, but yeah, being in front of the camera, um, if probably more if you're a beginning speaker, it really helped her get to the point where she was confident when she was in person. Um, and I already mentioned the exposure without the travel, because that's one thing I hear with speakers is they're spending all their time traveling. Um, and this is something, I mean, I literally walk down from my bedroom, pop in this room, and I can, you know, get, create something, and it can be viewed around the world um, versus the travel and the expense and whatnot. So um, it's, like I said, it's better to be in person, but the second best thing is to be there on video. Um, so let me talk about why YouTube might be a mismatch for your business. Um, and that is, um, if you want to use YouTube as a source of revenue, um, you, got, you guys all see them. There are ads on YouTube. And it's just such a tiny, tiny dollar amount that unless you get really big, like Tony Robbins big, um, you're really not going to bring in much money. So I want to first dispel the myth that you can get rich on YouTube. I mean, you can if you get big, but you have to be really big in the way I work with my clients. I say, don't even turn on the ads. You are, you know, the, the goal here, the goal for you guys might be to get a speaking gig or to get some coaching gigs, um, much more valuable than a quarter penny per view in the AdSense world. Um, so another one is YouTube is, um, it's kind of a time suck um, to, to be, you know, quite honest is, it compared to something like Instagram or you know some of the social media, YouTube takes more time. Um, it's it's more powerful, but 
it's powerful because it takes more time. There's, you know, on Facebook, you can just record a quick video, you just selfie, hold it, and you pop it up there and people see it and 24 hours later, it's gone. Uh, YouTube video is, you know, will last years and years and years. So it takes a little more time up front, but the value for you as a business uh, is much more long term. So you probably put a lot more effort into making a good video, maybe some effort into editing it. And then also the metadata optimization. So that's the title, tags, description, thumbnails. There's a lot of stuff that you can do on YouTube to make sure people see your video. Um, and you know, it's, it's very different from Facebook. Facebook just kind of serves up to your friends, your video, or if you, if you post a video, it serves it up to your friends. And if your friends like it, it serves it up to more. Uh, if their friends don't like it, it's kind of just dwindles away and it's gone pretty quickly. Uh, with YouTube, it knows so much more because you're putting in that data. Um, it knows so much more about your video, so it's able to share it with people who you don't know. But then you also need that positive reinforcement from the people who are watching. Uh, so it's a combination of this metadata, the, the geeky stuff that I help my clients with, and the social signals, how people are behaving when they watch your video. Um, another good reason that you should not be doing YouTube is if you don't want to give away your best value. And I think if you guys are speakers, you probably are used to giving away your best value. Uh, and you know how this works. You get up there on stage, you get everyone really excited, you give them you know, the keys to your kingdom, and they're like, wow, this is amazing, but they only retain so much and they, they can't actually uh, take a lot of action based on that. So the same thing with online video. You're giving them a massive amount of value, but most of them aren't going to be able to take a specific action until they engage you at a different level. Would be that through a course, be that through buying your book, or be that through engaging you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So give it all away, um, and then just package it a lot better when someone pays you. Um, and then the, uh, the last thing I have on my list that I was, I was thinking about was um, that if you're stuck in your ways and you have like your idea of how things are supposed to work, YouTube is unique and there are formulas to make it work. And um, I think you have to be really open to learning and changing and adjusting so that you can improve your YouTube channel. Um, like one thing that I often see people do is starting with their, their branding. So there's a little, little music and it says Katrina Sawa and it's like, da, 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 and that's the first 10 seconds of the video. Uh, half the audience has already clicked away because they don't care about Katrina. They care about the value you offer them in the title, the thumbnail, and the description. That's what they're there for. They will only put up with that, that nice little animation after you've verified that, hey, I'm definitely gonna answer this question. I'm, I'm here and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna cover it for you. So, um, and a lot of people just really are, are stuck in their ways about like thinking about TV or, oh, you know, Tony, Tony Robbins does it this way, so I should do it that way too. Um, Tony's kind of big and the, the rules apply differently when you're just starting out. Uh, so I know I've just got like a minute or two more. Um, I just wanted to give you three reasons that there are three ways that you could get on um, YouTube. And the first one is, re is your recorded speeches. So you probably have had a video camera in the back of the room recording you speaking. Um, that is good if you, your audience is like maybe someone from a speakers bureau or some your next speaking gig so they can see how you react to the crowd. But for your audience, the people who actually get value from your talks, those, they, they almost always fall flat, unless they're a TED Talk, and because TED Talks are just so well made, um, both the talk and the videography, that people will watch it. But otherwise, people wanna watch a one-on-one -on -one video. Most people watching YouTube are alone, they're probably with their cell phone, so you need to develop one-on-one -on -one video. So you could take a speech, break it up into the key points, and make, 10 videos out of that, but they're 10 five minute long videos where you talk directly to the camera, directly to the one person who's on the other side of the lens, not, so they don't feel like they're in the back of the room um, when you're talking to a group of other people. Um, so, but there are reasons, like I said, to do, to do both. Um, so that those three to five minute helpful videos are what you should, I think that's the best thing to do on YouTube. Just crank out the, those little bits of knowledge that you have put those out for, for your target audience to find. That's, that stuff does really well. If you can title it how to dot, 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 
it's almost guaranteed to do well on YouTube because um, that's where the audience is searching for that stuff. Um, and of course, that's where you build your authority with your end users. The, the speech is probably building more authority with speakers bureaus or um, potential other people who are hiring you as a speaker, but the actual three, minute, three to five minutes is building authority with the end user. And they are probably, um, they, they talk to the, the other people who are, who are bringing on the speakers. Uh, and last one is testimonials. Um, and this is something you can get after a speech. I know after you get done speaking, you're probably overwhelmed. So ideally you have someone else there to capture testimonials, but you can easily capture testimonials with your, with your cell phone. And that way you've got other people talking about how good you are. Um, all I recommend is that you have a lavalier microphone that connects to your cell phone because usually the room is loud when you're, when you're talking about right after speaking. But get up close, capture those testimonials. Those can go on YouTube. They're not a huge draw in to your YouTube channel, but they're great content. You can copy it over to your website too. Um, and it's great to have other people talking about how, how much they enjoyed hearing you speak. So that is, I think, my 10 minutes for, or my 12 minutes. Um, so I want to just go through that quick stuff about YouTube. Um, if you want to talk more, this clearly I can talk a lot about YouTube. Um, I would love to invite you. Just go to my website, which is AuthenticWestFilms.com, um, and schedule uh, a free 20-minute chat. And actually, if you, if you put in the comments that you were on this call, we'll make it a 40-minute chat, and we'll talk about how you might be able to use YouTube uh, in your business and really figure out if it's the right match for you because it is, it's a big investment in time and money and you want to think about it, make sure it's the right time for your business to be going in this direction. But I'd so, love to hear questions. Yeah, it's interesting that you, you pose it as an option, Brighton, because I'm like, if you're doing videos, duh, put them on YouTube. So I'm just, so it, it doesn't make sense. It did up until today, it didn't make sense to not put them there if I'm doing videos. Why? Well, I, I guess, I mean, I have to say, I think of YouTube as that number two search engine. It's the place where yeah. you're going to get discovered online with your videos by people you don't know. It is also a free host for videos. So if you want to right. put a video on your website, um, you can just take it and slap it up on YouTube and not do any of that metadata, and it will show up on your website, and it'll be perfectly fine, and it's free. Um, but it's not going to be working for you. Same thing if you take your Facebook videos, you shot something for Facebook or your Facebook lives, you take them, you shoot them up on YouTube. That's good. It's not going to be working for you unless you think I'm creating content specifically for the YouTube viewer and um, it's not being recycled. I, I encourage you to, to create content for all different users, but it's, um, it's specific. It's very powerful if you use it correctly. I agree. Um, and we definitely want to take some questions. I have a couple and I've actually got your YouTube page up. So I'm going to do a screen share, but I just wanted to acknowledge Tanya. We see you here. We don't see your face, Tanya, just so you know, but we, we see that you're here. So if you have questions, please let us know. Otherwise, um, make sure you're posting in the chat room so that you're hearing who, what you do. You can see what everybody else has posted, I think. If not, um, open the chat room. Uh, okay, so let me screen share because your YouTube is quite impressive. You have 9,200 subscribers. That's a lot of you. That's a lot of subscribers. And look, he's got a really cool branded header, which I still have yet to figure out the size and shape on that to do it myself. I'll send you a template. Uh, right? <laughs> Perfect. I would love a template on that because look at mine compared to yours. I'm like, bleh, boring. I can't, I had to pick a stupid picture from there. And so, it's the only social media that I haven't been able to customize yet because I haven't looked, I haven't looked, frankly, for the template, but whatever. Yeah, and real quickly, yeah, it's very, I mean, YouTube shows up, people watch YouTube on their TVs and they yeah. watch YouTube on their, on their smart devices. Yeah. So your, your graphics have to work across all those devices. I so totally agree. If you were to watch that on a TV, it would look very different. I, I totally agree because you need to be branded. So, so I'll bet your website looks more like this, right? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm actually, I'm working on, I just, I am in the middle of a rebrand. I am about to do Brighton West video officially. Okay. Um, so uh, everything's kind of moving more this direction. But look what he's doing with his, his images. So his uh, titles are all in here. And I, I admire people that do it this way. I don't take the time to do that. Um, with my videos, um, 
you know, mine just look like this, a bunch of talking heads with my hands sticking out because I'm constantly using my hands. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it's funny because I have an autoplay video, which is one of myself on TV, and you have an autoplay video, which is something, it's definitely good because this shows up for people. Tell them about what the, this does. But yeah. Views. So this is called a channel trailer and it shows yeah. up only when someone is not subscribed. So Katrina, if you hit the subscribe button um, right. on my channel, um, it should and refresh, you'll see it go away. So essentially this is a call for people to subscribe. Yeah. It's a special spot for YouTube. Ideally you put a video there that says, hey, this is what you're gonna get, this is the amazing content, this is when I release stuff, push the subscribe button now, and then that video goes away from you. So um, that's yeah. the goal of that one spot, and it does autoplay, so it's very, it's a very specific video. I like and you can unsubscribe if you want. <laughs> and then set up a video studio in your home, so you have some different themes on your playlist, which is good. Um, portfolio, right? And so I do a similar thing, so I have, I don't really call it uh, video tips, I should, I don't, um, there's a glitch here with my thing. I'm not really sure, but so I do interviews and TV promotions and I do testimonials. So I put testimonials in here because mm -hmm. a lot of people give me, and then I have my speaking presentations. So some of my entire speaking presentations are in here. And then when Blab was around, I did some Blabs in here too, but cool. Um, and you know, one thing I was just going to mention is you could put all your videos. I mean, I have my coaching call videos, I have other videos, and they're just not public. So probably the majority of my videos in here are not public. And But it's a great place to store videos and trainings and webinars and things like that that you're doing so that you can actually go and stick them on a website. So like the video that's here on this website is on YouTube. And I just embedded it here on the page. So I, that's why I love YouTube. Talk to that mm -hmm. for a second on how they could utilize that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, YouTube, uh, like I mentioned, it, it is a free host. Um, if you want to take it up a notch, I want to, want to give a shout out to Vimeo or Wistia. And what they do, they're, they both have some free options, but you pay like five bucks a month. And you get a lot of options like, okay, well, this video can only be embedded in my homepage. No one can take that and put it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Or this video will only start playing and then they have to give me their email address to finish watching it. So things on your website, um, I really like Vimeo and Wistia because they're, they have, they'll remove all the branding and you really can set up, you can really dig in and, and choose like the color of the play button and things like that. YouTube is a little more basic, but it's completely free and you can put it up on, on your website or any other place that you want to share video. Yeah, honestly, I have a gazillion videos. I have 941 videos on here. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, I use it like a storage. You wouldn't even believe it. And I don't even think Three. that even half of those are live. I think, I don't even know where to check the number of videos that I have on here. Oh, no. Four. Maybe about, I can't remember. I don't, about might give you the number of views. Uh, well, I have 41,000 views, but okay, not the number. Yeah, 941 videos. I swear to God, at least half of those are probably me just storing stuff so that I can put them on my website. So I love YouTube, and you know, I hope they don't change things very <laughs> fast. Uh, so any other questions? Anybody have any questions about YouTube? Yeah, Rhonda and then Laura. So um, interesting, Katrina, and I, this is a question for Brighton because you're right. I have a video that goes out, but it's me doing media. So Brighton, it, it sounds like it's better if you're saying, hello, come into my uh, videos and this is what I have. This is your what's going to be available for you. So I think I need to change that. And then also, um, I've been noticing that there's a YouTube Live, just like a Facebook Live. So with, for YouTube Live, is it real easy to use? And that's something I haven't looked into, but I was thinking about going that, that route, doing some more of that. Yeah, it's pretty easy to use. I, I was, you know, just use your smartphone. Um, I did a live this morning. Um, they are different, um, and, and YouTube treats them a little differently in terms of how well they, they make it out there. But uh, while you're live, if you're going to do YouTube Live works well for long videos. Um, Facebook Lives, I think, work better short. But 
Um, you get really good ranking uh, for your topic area that you're talking about. Uh, they give you a little live icon. They notify your subscribers that you're live. So there's a lot of good reasons to go live. And it's pretty simple. You, you can just use the app on your phone and say, I want to go live right now. The app on Thank your you. Phone for YouTube. YouTube app. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Sure. Just, I haven't tried that either. I need to try it just to see what happens. <laughs> see what happens. Ta-da, well, I'm here. You can't plan ahead for this stuff. You just have to go press play. Yep. <laughs> you got to do it. Do it. And then you can always go delete it. Just stop. People freak right. out about, oh, I don't know what it's going to look like. Who cares? Just figure it out. <laughs> Laura. And you can, when you are doing anything from your phone, you can always decide uh, ahead of time, oh, I don't want that to be public. I want it to be unlisted or private so that from the get-go, I almost always upload everything as private to start, except for a live because it's, it's just happening. Um, but that gives you some chance to go and like tweak the title and the tags and the description and all that stuff before it makes it out. Put a new thumbnail on if you want to. Thumbnails, I'm going to say, Katrina, thumbnails are very important at convincing people to watch your videos. Um, I especially now, I mean, you look out there, are, there are so many people producing videos with really nice thumbnails. That's what you're competing with. Um, so you have to have something. And uh, you're talking about all of these right here. Yeah. Versus looking at, well, here's Rhonda's, for example, just some random person with their mouth open. Right. Right. <laughs> and, and the mouth open is actually I, good. Just to say, just to let you know, if you look at mine again, um, you'll see my mouth is usually open. Um, the, I have a friend who did a study of, of thumbnails and they found that it was um, bright colors and um, lighter than normal. Like the, it's the, the, the image is lighter than it would be in, in the video. Um, eyes looking directly at the camera, weird um, expression or in the middle of speaking. If you're smiling, people are like, okay, this person's smiling. But if you're in the middle of talking, people want to know what you're saying and so they're more likely to click your video. That's funny because I always try to get one that doesn't make me look retarded, but they all look retarded. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. You get three choices. Um, you could get, uh, there's something called TubeBuddy. Um, it's a free plugin, and I believe with the free version, you can choose any frame from your video to be your thumbnail. But you can upload a new um, image, too. So, right. Yep. Um, but you have to take the time to do that. So you do this on what app? Um, I do it in, um, in Photoshop. I actually have someone who does these for me. In Photoshop. So... Are you making... It's not clicking on, okay, so it's, and then you just do it in your, when you're going into your creator or your editing yep. screen. Creator Studio and pop it in there, yeah. Right, so if I was in my editor right here, I would put custom thumbnail right here and then you just upload it, that's how yep. you do it. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Awesome. All right, does anybody um, else have some, Laura, did you ask your question? No, okay, go ahead. I, um, I'm wondering how the integration between Facebook Live and YouTube could be a smooth transition. In other words, could you do a Facebook Live and then post it on YouTube, or could you do a YouTube and post it? How do you see that working, and, and is it worth the I, – I, I did something interesting today. I did an audio on my phone to Facebook with an image from Canva that I made with my bullet point, and then I downloaded it. Um, as an mp4 and then I uploaded it to YouTube and then I took the YouTube link and posted it over to LinkedIn so I was able to get three uses out of one eight-minute short tip thing mm -hmm. and I'm interested in that kind of quick yeah repurpose yeah. everything I think yeah so so this is I mean it's a tough one because Facebook and YouTube hate each other um, okay. They both want you to spend as much time as possible on their website. And I mean, realistically, they're the top three. So where are people spending time? They're, they're either on Google, Facebook, or, or YouTube. So they're direct competition. Um, so I don't think they make it very easy to do anything on both of those platforms. I would encourage you, if you have that MP4 file, to go directly to LinkedIn instead of from YouTube to LinkedIn. How do you um, do that? How do you do that? Because I, I, I couldn't figure out how to upload an MP, MP4. Um, it oh. should be possible. I guess I usually have MOV files, um, oh, wait, wait, but MP4 be... should work too. But LinkedIn, uh, late last year, started added video 
Uh, so it used to be that you could put YouTube links there. You still can. They do okay. But if you put the video directly on LinkedIn, it will do better because you made LinkedIn happy. Because oh. you're not allowing people to go. You're not making it so that people can click on your video and leave LinkedIn and go to YouTube because LinkedIn wants people to stay too. Right, right. Of course, they all want them. You want, you want it. They want it encapsulated. So, like, so is the strategy then to get three different cell phones and go live on Facebook on this one, <laughs> go live on YouTube here, and go live on LinkedIn and just do one video so you don't have to. So, no, you can't go live on LinkedIn yet, but you can. So you can upload. So I that's, thought you could. LinkedIn, maybe not. Okay. Oh wait, maybe you can. I Is there a live on LinkedIn? I can't remember now. I don't think so. Uh, yeah. That's a great question. I don't, I thought that was- I know, I know Carrie had a question too. I want to make sure. So, so can you upload an MP3 to, uh, an MP3 to LinkedIn, do you think? Um, I, was trying to do. You can't oh, I don't know. Oh, because it's just, well, the MP4 would be video if you have the image on it. Um, but okay, I, don't, that makes sense. That makes I don't know if you can upload just audio. Okay. I'm not sure. Yeah. Like Carrie Hammer can. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to know if there were any tricks on actually getting your video to upload. And it, maybe it's just like a, I don't know, maybe no one else has had this problem, but I will have short videos, like three to 10 minutes, less than that, like fairly short videos that I'll try, I'll take on my phone and then later I'll try, I want to put these on to YouTube to save them or share them. And it will just take hours and hours and hours. And like, I'll just leave my phone on all night and like take off the sleep mode, like hoping that will help. And then it'll just, it'll just fail in the middle of the night. Interesting. So are you on Wi-Fi when you're doing this or is yeah. it? Yeah. The, I mean, it does. The, the files aren't that large, so you shouldn't have any trouble. I would definitely try to use the YouTube app because you can use the app to, to pull the files off your phone and, and go to YouTube. I think it's a little more straightforward than going to your phone and saying, upload this to YouTube. You can change more settings that way too. Um, but it shouldn't be happening. Um, actually, I just got something super exciting. It's right next to me. This is the lightning from your Apple iPhone to Ethernet. So I can plug my iPhone directly into my Ethernet and get 100 megabits per second download through my iPhone and like 20 up. So um, I've only played with this once, but um, yeah, but I think, I mean, you shouldn't really have, you shouldn't be having trouble. I would say try the YouTube app and see if that helps um, straighten that out. Okay. Thanks. Sure. All right. Any other questions? Great questions. Thank you all. It's a good topic. Yeah, Laura, one more. We can still take it. It's fine. Because I was just going to do a business tip. And I mean, if we're talking about video, we might as well just keep talking about video and this kind of topic because um, I've been looking at LinkedIn as you guys are talking and trying to figure that out too. <laughs> Laura, what was your other question? Well, I would just say, bottom line, I know you're a YouTuber guy. But yep. if, you, if you were to just give me an objective answer, would you spend more time on Facebook or YouTube if you're a life coach, energetic worker with writing a book and have a small niche with that? Ooh, this is a hard one. If I was on Facebook, I would definitely be live. I'll tell you that much. Um, Facebook live um, is good. And I mean, realistically, Facebook, I think you can do better with Facebook Live being a little more intermittent and just kind of popping in there and, and giving some value. YouTube, if you got the time to really invest. So Facebook, as soon as you post that video on Facebook, it immediately people start seeing it because you've got an audience around you already. YouTube, like you've got your subscribers um, and then it's a long haul. But I mean, I've got videos for 10 years ago that are still making me money um, because I've got ads running on them. And it's just, they just keep going. And especially if your advice, I think YouTube is really good if your advice is not changing. So YouTube, not so great if you're talking about the latest new Apple 4S iPhone. And then like six months later, it's like, oh, well, I need to take that video down uh, and start over. So if you've got something long-term, um, but it is, it, it's, more of a time investment because you you really should do those thumbnails and those tags and titles and stuff because that's what's going to make youtube really work for you yeah okay I, I i'm getting a little tired of youtube i mean facebook live 
conversations. Is anybody else? Am I am I the only one that's like no. oh, here's another live and no. I'm the only one, huh? Okay. Well, and I was gonna say <laughs> you have to be on Facebook Live as an entrepreneur these days. I mean, yeah, I YouTube do. Is I mean, I've been on YouTube for a gazillion years or however long it's been around. You know, with at least five hundred probably actual videos out there with content. They're all content, right? And I, honestly, I've every once in a while I hear somebody, and I don't have ads, okay? So I just put up a video. I do have call to action in my video. I do have the descriptions written with links and stuff like that, and I have good keywords and stuff like that. Um, but and then I also take my videos and embed them into blog posts, and I also share them out to social media, so they get repurposed in many different ways. But I can't track a single client coming straight from YouTube saying, I found you on YouTube, I watched some videos, and I came and hired you. Like, so most people will just see a lot of different things, but however, I have seen people come from a Facebook Live because they saw me there, and then they went to a website, got a freebie, and came to a call and hired me. So I have seen the sale there. So just an FYI. So how did they find out about the Facebook Live? Did you do advertising for that? No, because they either I was either shared it in a group or somebody else shared okay. it. It was on somebody else's, you know. And I have five thousand friends too. So if that I helps. do it on my personal profile, that's where it has the most meat. But right. I've also been trying to. Um, test out by doing it inside my group. So my group only has about 600 people though or something, right? Mm -hmm. And so then if you do the Facebook Live exclusively in your group uh, and you don't share it out, like they have to join the group to watch it kind of thing, it's exclusive content and it's great mm -hmm. and it makes more people want to join your group. Um, I'm just, I'm, I don't have enough patience. <laughs> <laughs> Plain and simple, I don't have enough patience to wait to, I like to share it out into the many people as possible. So I'm, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that as far as whether to put it in your group or your business page or your personal profile where, or where the most people are or just share it everywhere. And Yeah, I don't know. I can't, I can't really say because I, I am the YouTube guy. Um, I don't spend that much on Facebook. I feel like Facebook is changing way more often than YouTube is changing. It is. Um, they're just kind of, I mean, essentially, YouTube has a very different model of how they make money. Yeah. If, people, if you have ads on your videos and people watch your videos, that means um, they make more money. And if so, and there are so many businesses out there doing that. If, like Brendan Burchard, um, he makes probably a lot of money off of YouTube and they keep promoting his videos. My guess is if he's over on Facebook, he probably has to pay to get people, pay for that reach. Mm -hmm. Because Facebook's business model is get, get the creator to pay, not the viewer. So it's a different it's a different model. I also want to mention between the, the two of them, Facebook, um, unless they've changed, I don't know, they, they keep saying they're going to change. Facebook counts a view as three seconds and YouTube counts a view as, I think they say 30 seconds and the user had to start it. So if you have an autoplay like on your website, that doesn't count as a view. So it's, it's apples and oranges. Um, it looks like it's going to be viewed a heck of a lot more on Facebook than it's actually getting viewed. Um, because if you if someone's scrolling through and, and they it spends six, three seconds on the screen, um, but I know <laughs> Facebook's getting better at that. They're auto playing less often and changing things, but it's it's different. Uh, I had something to say. Is yeah, that Katrina? Okay. Um, Laura, that's interesting that you were saying that um, you're getting tired of Facebook Live. So it'll be interesting to hear what that what that feeling is for but you know what I've been finding is I have a private group that I've been nurturing and so sometimes I'll be out on my general uh, area like you could train like about 5,000 people and move them into a private group and in that private group I've been setting up events because like there'll be consistent time that I'm coming so within that group they know that I'll be going live and that's helped a lot too with um, nurturing a private group and having consistency in them knowing why I'm coming on live. So then I, that private group I can nurture and, and build something with. That's not the way I've been using that. So, um, good point. I was just trying to see um, what you were talking about with the ads on here. So can anybody put ads on their videos? And do you want to do that if you're not well known or only if you're um, well known because people will skip through? Cause 
What do you think? Well, yeah, it's something um, you have to have a lot of views. They, they, YouTube changed this. So YouTube uh, does a lot of changes. They're just not like the same thing as how the way Facebook is changing in terms of who will view your content, but they changed it so that it's much harder to run ads now. Um, there was a lot of controversy. I don't know if you guys heard about it, but like, you know, Al Qaeda was running a recruiting video and Target's ads showed up in front of it. So Target was paying Al Qaeda. Uh -huh. And there was, so YouTube said, okay, we need better controls. And they really, they kicked off huge numbers of people out of the advertising program. Um, but still, they want you to grow your channel so that you can get to the point where you can run ads so that they can make money. Because it's like a 50-50 split. Um, but you know, that's still, I mean, it's only a quarter penny, but when you when your channel gets big enough, it, it pays, but only when it's big enough. Um, and it's part yeah. of your model. If you're smaller, like you don't want to have, you know, make a 50 cent commission on an ad and have like your, your next client that would have had a, you know, a lifetime value of, of $20,000 go and, and buy a purse or something like that because an ad played in front of your video. It's just, to me, it's not worth the risk. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's different models. Okay, so we got to move on to the five minutes of the spotlight. But I have one quick little thing. I was looking at the Brendan Bouchard page, and boy, he has six hundred and seventy-five thousand. But look what he's doing here on his thing here. So he actually immediately tells you to subscribe because people forget to go click the subscribe button. So I would definitely do this. I need to change this. Then he also says, please support my new book via this link. And it probably if I press read more, it'll go there. But it starts playing the video. So, and it's a 36 minute video. Is that 36 wow. minutes? Yeah, yeah, probably. It looks like it. So, so this yeah, and this is one of those things where what works for people with 600,000 subscribers does not necessarily work for people. Yeah, with I get it. So, I get it. Okay, um, good. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, does anybody have a burning thing they need help with? Because I'd love to maybe pop over to Carrie's website and give her some feedback and we can all do that. Mm. Is that cool? Or does anybody have a burning thing that they need help with? Okay. So let's go look over to Carrie's. I put it up already. And then make sure before we get done here, if you have a free gift or a free audio or a free whatever on your website, put it over in the chat because I'm going to make sure I link to it. Um, so you can have a special URL or go pull a page from your chat or from, from your website while we're looking at this. And if you guys want to chime in and unmute yourself and tell Carrie what you think of the website, that would be good. So let's see. So I got here. So I'm going to reload it because it did this. Is this what it's supposed to look like in the beginning, Carrie? Or is this... Is this just because it's under construction? No, it looks like that. It's usually, I, I thought it was a smaller shot, but <clears throat> someone advised me to do a landing page. And okay. so this is my landing page. <laughs> All right. Well, the only thing I worry about is the loading, how long it takes to load a oh, video like okay. this. Okay. Um, on my Mac, it might be quick, but on people's cell phones and other things, it might take a while to load. I it noticed, gets your I, noticed attention. On, I noticed on the cell phone view that it just shows up as an image and not okay. a video. Well, it sure gets your attention. I don't know. Um, I, first of all, I can't, I think the it needs to be white text if you're going to do this. Okay. Um, I don't know that this is the best use of your homepage, frankly. I didn't know what to do with the landing yeah. page. I, I made the rest of the site and somebody critiqued my site and said, you need a landing page. I'm like, well, but a landing I page. Started reading, what are landing pages? What should I be doing? And I don't have a product besides myself that I'm selling or giving away yet. Uh-huh. So I, I didn't know. So then don't do a landing page until you have a giveaway is my advice. Okay. <laughs> because you just need to get them on the list and you do have something you can give away. You can give away a free consult. You can give away your, right now, these days you need to put something, uh, you need to have people sign up for a newsletter, especially if you're going to, it used to be that we, oh, we got away from the newsletter. Don't say the newsletter. Nobody wants another newsletter. But now if you get anybody from the European Union countries opting into your website, they honestly need to sign up for your newsletter if you're going to continue marketing to them. So you can say something, instead of saying, get my free audio, 
and you'll also get a subscription to my newsletter, which is what we used to say. Now we have to say, sign up for my free email newsletter with tips on blah, 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 blah. And I'm also going to send you a free audio on the three keys to blankety blank. So that's what I would suggest you put right here, smack dab in the middle of your thing. Now, um, you guys can all give some input. Um, so the goal of your website though is to get people on your email list and then get more contacts. So the most important thing is that you talk about the need for their needs and you get people on an email list. I know you're looking at nonprofits here, so you know they might want to come straight to a call because they might be more serious of a prospect. Um, I personally am not a fan of the Wix layouts at all. Um, and it does limit you on the ability for sales and marketing things that you can do with Wix. So I don't really recommend uh, this kind of a format at all. It's not horrible, but um, anybody want to give her some initial thoughts? What, what do you not like? What is it that you don't like about Wix or the formatting? So I can, well, when your WordPress is the best place to build a website, unless you're going to invest in software like Brendan Bouchard into um, some of these higher end softwares, which none of you probably need. Um, most entrepreneurs just need a simple WordPress site. And the themes these days are so easy. They do have drag and drop themes where it can be easy for the user to build your site or actually do things on your site. But um, Wix isn't as savvy with the search engine optimization stuff, with the blogging, with the opt-in box stuff. And so a lot of that stuff you really need on your website and it's constricted with what's available on Wix, the platform itself. So Weebly is the same thing. Um, Will it work for a few months? Yes. So if you just need to get going, get something here, but get an opt-in box and then just plan on redesigning and moving to WordPress, I'd say within six months or so and investing in your website is what I would do because okay. it's fine to get something up today, but I would not say that this is going to end. And most of us need to update our websites every two years anyways with the technology that comes around. So just know that your website is something you're always going to be investing in, in my opinion. Any other thoughts? So what is the URL going to be um, your, your name or something? It's not going to be one of those Wix. No, it'll be fundraising, writer, fundraising writer life. And you're going to pay the $8 a month to get the Wix branding off of it, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, honestly, for what you're doing, it might work for a while, but, but I'd want to know more. Like right now we can't know more as far as the functionality, as far as um, building your database and making it so you can have autoresponders and things like that. And this system doesn't do that. You need to make sure you have an email marketing system, right? That's hooked into this site. And so some of the things you're going to do with capturing it, contact information are going to be going through that email marketing system. And so you have to be able to put the email marketing systems, opt-in boxes or code onto this site and make it look okay. That make sense. Yes, no? I don't know. <laughs> For example, uh, when so you're going to have an opt-in box. <clears throat> like, here's my free gift. This is a landing page that it goes to. Um, and it's just designed to do one thing. Get my top 10 revenue-producing activities, audio training, and checklists, right? With an opt-in box. So you don't want an opt-in box through Wix. You want it through an email marketing service that can send people an automatic email, which is called an autoresponder. So you're going to need AWeber or MailChimp or Constant Contact <coughs> or a shopping cart. If you're going to sell services and you're going to actually have coaching programs on your website, you're going to want some kind of a shopping cart. You can use PayPal, but it's a short-term solution <coughs> in, my, in my opinion. <coughs> Where's her site? Um, we're kind of at time as far as, um, the colors and the look and feel, 
it's good. Where is the information about you? Um, there is a page that says about me and it links from the homepage. Um, but it's, I haven't filled it out yet, but there's an about me box and the link to that. And it goes to an about me page. That okay. I haven't written yet. So that's the most important page besides your homepage. Most people will read that first. So make sure you get in there. I know it's the hardest thing to write about sometimes. Yeah, it hasn't been published yet, but. <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. And then your full contact information and regardless of what you're doing, make sure you guys have a policies page because that's it's required by law, FTC these days. So your full contact includes an address, a phone number, an email address. Um, and it also just, I mean, that's just better for credibility anyways but you want a policies page link down here, terms and conditions, policies, and make sure you're heeding the new GDPR uh, requirements with that. I know, I talk really fast. <laughs> uh, there is a free audio on my website, all about websites, just so you know, free training, and I'll put it in the chat room for you. Okay. Any other questions on her site? You guys have the link there? Are you looking at it? No. <clears throat> so it's a good start. Um, I would just hurry up and get some of that stuff in place and just start utilizing it. Go get some clients. Once you get some money, then figure out how you want to re really rebrand yourself. You know? Yeah. You don't have to do that right off the, be off the bat. But getting it functional so people can sign up for stuff and contact you and you can capture their contact information. That's the key to making a website, not just a brochure, make it more interactive. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to a big philanthropist convention um, in about at the end of this month, like the 25th of June. And mm -hmm. so that's why I'm like, okay, I have to have a website. I have to have somewhere to send people. Mm -hmm. so, um, just make sure that I have better capturing. <laughs> awesome. More ways to capture <clears throat> all right cool thank you so much for looking well we're yeah we're at the end of the hour and randy's here hi randy we didn't, i don't know how much hi. We got. <laughs> okay uh but uh so we're at, does anybody have any last minute things to share or brighton do you have a any kind of freebie for us or any kind of or do you already stick it on your website um, like I said, I think uh, if you want to um, go in and see, schedule a uh, consultation, I'll just double the amount of time I spent with you. Um, how about that? You mentioned that you were here. That's where you found, found me. Right. Perfect. All about YouTube. Anything. So even if we have a YouTube, you can help us figure out how to get more subscribers. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. I want to know that. <laughs> All right. Thanks for being here, you guys. And uh, we'll see you next month on the next webinar. And tomorrow, for those of you who are coming to the luncheon, uh, Mickey is speaking on referrals, and so is Aaron Sum is speaking on getting more confidence in speaking and your business in general, uh, and it should be really good. So I look forward to it. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Thank you all. Carrie, if you want to hang out for just a second, hold on.